Back here in the studios here in San Francisco on the EA headquarters. You know Mike Skim down here, but finally time we got someone famous in the Madden community <laughs> on the desk here. You, what is up everybody? What you guys just saw in the beginning of the video was me making my professional shoutcasting commentary, whatever you want to call it, debut. Not just doing YouTube, but actually calling a tournament, a Madden tournament, the Madden Club Championship that happened this week in San Francisco. I won a contest that you guys might remember me making a submission video for around early December. So I was one of the winners of the contest. I got flown out for a week to San Francisco and I was able to call a couple of games. I ended up calling five games for them. And I just want to share with you guys my experience, how it was throughout the week, some of the behind the scenes actions that you guys may not hear about, you guys may not see about what it takes to put together a professional Madden tournament, how what it takes to produce a professional Madden tournament and commentate a professional Madden tournament. So this whole process begins January 18th. I get an email from Andrew from EA, shout out to Andrew. He said that I was one of the winners of the Shoutcaster Showdown. And right there and then, he says, Monday, January 28th, we're flying you down. So that's in 10 days. So I'm already excited and I'm like, okay, I gotta get ready soon to make my professional commentary debut. Not doing post commentaries on YouTube, actually calling a game live, even though it's an esports game, it's still gonna be, you know, a live event. So I have to prepare myself for that moment. But this is something that I've always wanted to try out something I've always wanted to do and even potentially pursue if I was any good at it. I love doing YouTube. I want to do YouTube as long as I can. I love, you know, making videos for you guys. You guys support me from thick and thin. So I'm always here for you. But at the same time, doing professional commentary like this, you know, as long as I've been doing YouTube, it's something I've always thought about. You know, if I could call an NFL game, if I could, you know, sports I love like NFL, basketball, Na I, I love auto racing, so I'm gonna mention NASCAR as well. If I could call it the Daytona 500 on Fox or something, like that would be a dream come true for me. So, this was an opportunity to potentially get my name out there, get something going. So, I knew I had to take advantage, I knew I couldn't choke it. So, you know, I was already mentally prepared for that. So, we fly in Monday, January 28th, nothing happens then. Tuesday, January 29th is rehearsal day. The tournament starts the day after, Wednesday the 30th. So we rehearse on the 29th. Rehearsal, really nothing goes on. But I did get to meet the guys I would be working with, including Scott Cole, including RG. You guys know them. If you watch any professional Madden esports, you guys know Scott and RG are the voices of Madden esports. So it was cool. I mean, I've already met RG a couple of times at the uh, EA studio in Orlando. So I kind of, I know who RG was. I never really met Scott Cole before. So it was cool to meet Scott. In the rehearsal as well, I end up, you know, meeting up with Skimbo. I met Skimbo once before around October of last year. So so I, I didn't know Skimbo too too well, but I knew of him, he knew of me. And then I also met the other two winners of the Shoutcaster Showdown thing. Both of them named Nick. One you guys might know is OSU from the Madden Bomber League. The other one, Nick C, he is actually like a professional commentator as well. Just I believe in the Dota community and a couple of other games. And he wanted to try out um, casting Madden because he was a football fan. So met both, met both Nicks. You know, talk to Skimbo, started getting a little bit of chemistry with them since I would probably have to work with them at some point. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, guys, I was completely, I don't wanna say nervous day one, but I was just so out of my element because, as you guys know, I struggle with social anxiety. And just being in that new environment day one was very overwhelming for me. Like, <laughs> I, I was just so shook that first day. Everybody was kind of just chilling. We, we have what we call the talent room of all the commentators. You know, where we get ready, where we get makeup done, where we get you know our styling done, where we look all swagged out, get our clothes on, and pretty much for the entire first day, I probably didn't say too much. They were all having conversations. Sky, RG, Skimbo, they were cool with each other. Um, OSU was there. I'm gonna call him OSU in there. I'm just gonna call him Nick. He was in there. Uh, the other Nick had not flown in because he had a uh, flight travel issues. Not much happened on the first day during rehearsal. Like we mainly just sat around most of the day. You know, did like maybe one or two things. Did a re actual rehearsal for uh, calling a game. But otherwise, we didn't really do too much. So we fast forward to Wednesday now, and that's the first day that I'm scheduled to call a game. On the schedule, I am going to be calling the Broncos and Chargers round of 32 game. But 
I learned very quickly in the business of production, things change very quickly. You have to be on your feet, ready for just about any sudden movements, any changes. So first things first, I ended up wondering that I actually wasn't gonna call a game on Wednesday. I was gonna call two games on Thursday instead. Then the schedule changed again to where I was going to call a game on Wednesday, the last game of Wednesday in the round of 32, and it would be the Patriots and Jets game. So right away, I had a couple of hours to prepare for that. Normally you'd like to at least you know have an overnight study of you know the people who are going to be playing in a certain game their play styles i had a couple of hours to try to adapt to that really quick i was more prepared to call that broncos and chargers game so on top of that with that being my debut just you know doing professional shout casting we're going to call it uh the first half of that game was a bore it was just an absolute bore i'm not going to say i was nervous it's just i was inexperienced more than anything else and I, I don't really remember looking at play art or anything when I was calling the game. Like, I was calling it, but I was just, you know, kind of just sticking to basic football terminology. Like, oh, he's checking it down, he's checking it down, he's checking it down. I probably pissed off people in the Twitch chat. And even though it might not sound too bad to you guys, I don't know, I, I wasn't really too pleased with myself. But as I got into the action in the second half of the game, there was one sequence where I kind of Tony Romo did. I said there was going to be a fumble really soon. And then a fumble literally happened, I believe, two plays later. Our ice continues to check the ball down. J Wall is putting some hits on him. There might be a fumble soon. I agree. And. Oh, oh it is. it's a fumble! And J Wall will jump get up, on. Get up, get up! There is that fumble. He might fluke back. Come on. Good play, though. That's done. That's done. <laughs> Sweet sassy, my lassie. Look at it again. Oh, yeah. cook, Cookie Boy called this one. Those hurt, man. Those hurt. So right there now, I was like, okay, so maybe I have an idea of what's going on right here. But still, you know, as the game went on, I still wasn't completely, you know, I was sitting in RG's chair. So I felt like I was sitting in RG's chair and I didn't really make it my chair. I didn't make it my studio, my home. And that's really what you got to do when you're doing the commentary and all that. You can't worry about, okay, so I'm on the EA Sports production. You just got to make it your home. You, I got to kind of just make it like kind of like I'm calling a YouTube game or something like that, you know, just do me. And I wasn't really doing me, but there was one moment in the fourth quarter where I noticed Tyrod Taylor was at the free safety position on defense out of position. So I try to have some fun with that. You guys know I, I love the goofy out of position stuff. I run an all out of position team a couple of times. So I saw the Tyrod Taylor. I was like, this is something that we can have some fun about. Did you notice who was covering him though? That was Tyrod Taylor out of position. That might have had something to do with it there. Great. But the score is. Oh, oh, it's no. it's going to be a <laughs> pick six. He's a quarterback. Tyrod Taylor. He's a quarterback. Cookie called it the Tyrod Taylor in coverage. And you know, the first game I called with Scott and Skimbo. And Scott, he definitely made things easier because I was kind of like a deer in headlights calling that first game. But Scott, like I said, he's. As professional as it gets so he was balancing out between me and skimbo who were doing color commentary and skimbo he already knows a lot about like more about the game than pretty much anybody the game of men he's three-time belt winner so you know he knows all the ins and out of the game i was trying to maybe provide more of a fun side of commentary and you know a little bit more basic terminology than what skimbo was saying because skimbo would get direct into the point about exactly what was going on so yeah so as you know that tyrod taylor stuff was going on eventually tyrod taylor got an interception a couple of plays later and that's when i started getting excited about it. that's when i actually started having fun with the game before i was just trying to call the game i was trying not to screw up but once that tyrod taylor stuff happened jay wall had tyrod taylor on the field that's when i started having fun with it tyrod taylor's the jack of all trades he's blitzing now <laughs> i'm looking for the next tyrod taylor big boy get out of bounds he's in bounds let's see what he does Tyrod Taylor made the tackle, so he could not get out of bounds. Tyrod Taylor is a goon. And I felt like I closed the gate the day out, you know, decently. Not great, but decently. And I was really glad to get that day one experience in. So Thursday, I was still scheduled to call two games. I was scheduled to call that Broncos and Chargers game. I was scheduled to call a Browns game and whoever uh, won like a certain game that would go against the Browns in the round of 16. So, you know, I got a good night's sleep after. Well, actually, I didn't really get a good night's sleep. I got a couple hours of sleep. I wasn't getting good sleep in that hotel. But what I did do before day two started, which would be Thursday, was I actually watched back the stream of the first game that I commentated. And, you know, I took some notes on what I did right, what I did wrong. I prepared. And, you know, I already had notes ready for the Broncos and Chargers game that I was going to call. 
and once day two came in i called the game with nick not with scott so that was gonna be a different experience because this nick he never called a madden game himself before and with talking with him he was more of a casual madden player he wasn't like a hardcore madden player so it was gonna be up to me to really provide the x and o's of what was happening in the game i had to be on point has a lot of time over the middle, and Robert C. does not make the catch. No, he ends no, up no, no. Again. Not only was that not, a, it was almost a catch, but it was it was almost a catch for Allen defensively. A great user lurk, the catch to post route, nearly came down with the interception. He'll take the incompletion. And I, I felt really comfortable calling that Broncos and Chargers game. And at one point, there was a lateral touchdown. I, I can't get over this lateral. I have never seen this before in MCS. <laughs> I do this at home, but... With the stakes on the line, wow, wow, wow. And then Dion's got that speed to get away. And that, that really got me excited. And there was a lot of big plays in that game and it was really easy to call at that point. And as I was calling that game, I don't know why I'm doing this with my elbows, by the way. Again, my elbows on the chair. I'm gonna keep them here though. But um, this is what I was doing. I was just doing whatever I was comfortable doing in that chair. I wasn't worried about, okay, I'm an RG's chair calling the game. I was like, okay, let's make this my home. Let me do whatever. I'm gonna put my elbows here mad awkwardly. I'm gonna do that. The first day I was calling the game, like normally you have like casters put their hands on the desk. I didn't even do that. I thought it was rude, so I didn't do that. So I was just looking all awkward, like as awkward as I possibly could. I'm an awkward looking person in general. Like I don't know, I guess it's just a social anxiety thing, right? I just sit awkward, I do awkward things, but um yeah, so it was even worse. Like everybody thought I was just nervous and you know, confused and stuff. I'm, I'm just an awkward person, but you know, I, I kind of got awkward in my element day two, where I was just, I was just being me. I was just being whoever I, the best me I could possibly be. So I called a Broncos and Chargers game. That went good. So then after that, I called the Browns game. It was Browns and Bengals, and that was a very exciting game because the two players playing in it, Joke and Crush, were trash talking each other. So you know, there's a lot of action on the field. That means less, less that I had to cover. And then I was calling that game with Scott and Skimbo, the two guys I called the very first game I did with. So already we had uh, some chemistry working together. So so working with Skimbo was also pretty easy because he's he's got a passion for the game and you can you can hear it when he's commentating he's got a knack for it like i'm gonna go back to it crush has not scored an offensive touchdown his touchdown was a defensive touchdown quick snap and oh, he throws yeah. a pick he throws a pick at his fly yeah get him yeah, now it had get to be martin who something. picked it off and it was say less sometimes you do say less uh, i want to see a replay of this was this a spy that picked it it was! Oh my goodness. That was, that was not just a spy. That was a 62 overall. Really quick, day three. Uh, day three, I wasn't scheduled to call any games either. So this is going to be the second day that I end up calling a game that I wasn't scheduled to call. So once again, I wasn't able to prepare for, you know, overnight for the game I was about to call. I had to literally, it was like cramming for a test in a couple of hours. And that's not easy, but at the same time, you have to be ready in those situations. You never know when you're going to get your break, so... You know, it was going to be me and OSU calling two games. We're going to call a Buccaneers and Panthers round of 16 game. Or no, it was a Buccaneers and Panthers round of eight. It was around a 16 game, Buccaneers and Panthers. And then after that, we were going to call the Raiders and the Browns round of eight game. So that was a big game to call along with the uh, Buccaneers and Panthers game because Clef the God was in that game. And some of you guys know Clef the God is a Twitch streamer. You know, I had to get that game right. So what I did in the uh, talent room, we call it, where all the commentators kind of sit in. And for the most part, that talent room was pretty empty, which is me and OSU because Skimbo, RG, and Scott were pretty busy. It was just us two. And then we had our uh, stylist Giselle and we had our makeup girl, um, Veronica. Shout out to those two, by the way. They were uh, definitely on point over the week. But, you know, I was just sitting there. I rewatched Clef's game versus Mo. I was trying to figure out figure out whatever I could about Manu. And then I I was trying to get whatever notes I possibly could on Pavon. And I already called Joke's previous game. So I pretty much knew what I needed to know about Joke. And plus, you know, Joke's been around the scene a long time. There's, there's a lot of information about Joke out there that you don't have to think too hard to find. That was, that was it for me as far as commentating. Day four was uh, championship Saturday. I didn't have any game scheduled for that. That's when the uh, Shoutcaster showdown winners kind of just chill and learn from the best as they do their thing. They call the championship game. And I literally flew out from San Francisco back to New York after the championship game, flew out Saturday night, got back in Sunday morning. And that was my experience. That was my uh, experience down there with the Madden crew. And it was amazing. It, 
truly was amazing to be able to see what goes into the production and and the commentary amongst Scott, amongst RG and all those guys. Um, Scott, he was cool throughout the week. He was very casual with us in there. He didn't big time us basically, cause Scott, Scott's a big name in uh, men in esports casting. But Scott was as you know casual as a guy in there, kind of chilling with us. And um, and then RG, like RG's notes, he he raises the bar as far as how much insight he brings to professional Madden casting. So right away, as soon as I saw like the big stacks of papers of notes RG had, I was like, oh, okay. I need to at least do what he's doing, if not more, just to match what RG's doing. Just overall, like I had a lot of fun with it, man. And I, I like, this is, this is my dream. This is something that I really want to pursue. And especially after my experience this week, this is something that I think that I might have a future in as far as, you know, casting. But the one thing about the commentary that I was doing was I was doing color commentary instead of play by play. Play by play is the guy who calls the play. You guys think of Al Michaels or Jim Nance or basketball. You think of Mike Breen or Marv Albert. They're play by play guys. That's what I thought I was doing. I thought I signed up in that Shoutcaster Showdown, that contest to do play by play. So at the last second, every game I did was color commentary. I didn't do one play by play. I was like, what? Like I color commentary is normally you think about the Tony Romo or you think about Jeff Van Gundy or someone like that. And those guys are guys that normally either played the game before or coached the game before professionally. And me, I play Madden casually. I don't play it professionally. So I was like, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to uh, sound like a good color commentator? Because I, I do play the game a lot. I do know Madden. I, I like to think pretty decently. I played it for about 10 years now. So I had to try to rely on just my Madden veteran, I guess you want to call it, experience. But even then, like some of these guys have been playing Madden since like damn Madden negative 57 or like Madden 1990 or something like that, right? So... You know, just from like me playing some Madden 08, you know, getting a decent amount of reps, being decent at the game. I have to try to bring that kind of insight for color commentary. But at the end of the day, though, I really like doing the color commentary. You know, my dream still might be to like, you know, be play by play in NASCAR and call the Daytona 500. But esports sides of things, like if I could call esports NASCAR as a color commentator and try to lean on some of my knowledge for that, like I'm cool with that 100% like the Madden car got I, I thought I had some fun with that I thought I got better every single day so maybe that is something that I, I, I can pursue color commentary instead of play by play maybe a little bit of both I don't know I'm open for anything whoever's willing to take me for anything I will take it so that that's my experience for the whole Madden club championship I want to say big thank yous right now to uh, Scott Cole Scott Cole like I said, very cool guy, very easy to work with, as professional as it gets. RG, RG, he's the John Madden of Madden casting, and it was really cool to learn under RG and see what it takes to be a color commentator in the game of professional Madden. OSU, me and OSU, we spent a lot of time in the back room together. We were just chilling, joking. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty silent person, so I was just literally chilling, watching the games back there. OSU was kind of messing with uh, our stylist and makeup girls, Veronica and Giselle. And then we also had Alex Dunstan back there a lot of times. Alex Dunstan's kind of the talent manager. So big shout out to Alex. He was helping uh, keep us in check. Shout out to the production guys, Joe, Alex Strand, everybody else working on that team. It's gonna take a long time for me to go through everybody. So shout out to all of them. I thought the tournament was really well produced. And I'm not saying that in any sort of bias at all or any sort of butt kissing. I say that truly and genuinely that I thought that was the best produced Madden tournament by far. And I think that showed up on paper. A lot of the uh, players themselves thought the same thing. It looked really cool just behind the scenes as well as on the stream and a shout out to all the players as well all of the guys in the tournament from you know ghost from mo from dreamy everybody that was down there all 32 guys because they were really really welcoming of us who won the contest and the madden community it's it's tight knit and when I say it's tight knit, I mean that in a good way or a bad way sometimes because sometimes we have a hard time of letting people into our community, into our space rather than the regular guys. So 
you know, it was to be TBD on whether they would be happy about seeing, you know, me calling a game instead of RG or even a guy like Skimbo, because Skimbo is one of their own as a professional Madden player, a guy that is in the ladders currently playing with those guys, as opposed to me, I, I, just, I do YouTube. They might just maybe look at me in a different way, but they were, you know, they all were like, you did a good job and all that stuff, so... You know, shout out to everybody that was competing down there. They were all cool, so. And then a shout out to my parents and my sister because uh, they, even though they don't watch Man or anything like that, they watched every single game that I did and they were sending me a bunch of support texts along the way. So I gotta thank them because they, they are my biggest supporters at the end of the day. And besides them, my biggest supporters are all of you guys. There were so many uh, tweets and you know comments and DMs that I got over the week about how I was doing and I couldn't get back to all of them because there were so many and it was so overwhelming and uh, truly gratifying that you guys were all there supporting me and all, all people that I know in the Madden community big names little names like I had all sorts of people tweet and DM me and I, I, re I really do appreciate it I really can't even put into words how much I appreciate you guys' support and it every single time like I get down to myself, you guys are always there to pick me up and motivate me. So, you know, anything I do, anything I do in the rest of my life, like I really do owe it to you guys because without you guys, I don't know where I would be. I don't know what I would be about myself, what I would believe about myself. So, you know, all in all, this video was a lot longer than I thought it might be. So for the next couple of days, I'm going to upload some of my highlights from casting. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys who made it so far. Um, I guess leave a like, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, more than anything else, you guys support me. And the next anything, I'll do, no, like I said, I'll do anything now. I'll do 2K, I'll do a NASCAR, whatever, whatever the hell they want me to do. Uh, Esports, professional, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys for everything and I will catch you guys next time.